the weekly warm pipe. Let's go. Spooky time. Hey, we're back. We're back. We took a week off. We did. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> it's all right. We're consistent for almost two years, so we could take some breaks here and there, right? Yeah. I mean, I definitely appreciated it. Uh, I was just, I was, I think I was a little stressed out last week, and and then Russ was like, hey, man, it's okay. Take the week. We'll be back. So here we are. We'll regroup. That's right. <laughs> And in, in other news, the um, audio version of this on Spotify, iTunes, and all that is still not up. Hasn't been updated because the site that we use, uh, archive.org, is still down. Someone tried to hack it or something. So we we upload our audio podcast to there, and then it goes out to the sources. So we've only had YouTube stuff. But my buddy Mike had reached out to me. He's on a podcast called Forgotten Cinema Podcast, which he was a guest on our show at least once and he was like i could put you guys on our network and like host it on there you don't have to do anything so he's gonna look into that so possibly it'll be back up and running so we're just two episodes behind but if you guys are watching us here on youtube you're all caught up you're caught that's up. right <laughs> i think that was about about it with the updates on that there um I got my holiday special coming out this Wednesday, um, Halloween Eve. I'm going to be premiering it at 8 o'clock. So you can watch live with me. There'll be like a live chat. It's going to be an hour-long episode with different segments in it, old-school commercials. Um, it should be a good time. Did you, did you end up stealing anything from the Super Show or no? Mm, oh, no, no. Oh, okay. Fair I, mean, I still can't. I haven't finished I mean, editing it. So. I mean, it's it. I just I just didn't know if you were if you needed it or not. Like, don't you don't by all means you don't have to. But if you wanted it, there because you, you did. Is there Halloween themed? Yeah, it was yet? Saturday Super Show. Yeah, it was the whole the whole episode was Halloween themed. Oh, okay. I'm gonna add it into my notes so I don't forget yeah. now. If you want something out of it, feel free to take it. If you don't, I won't be offended. NES Attic Super Show stuff. Okay, add it to the notes. <laughs> because <laughs> i was going to do a segment with my buddy bobby who who made um a few horror movies okay Bo bobby used to be in retro games you, you've seen him at uh southeast game exchange oh yeah i know, I know bobby yeah, yeah yeah so i was gonna like i got the movie i ordered it i didn't get a chance to watch it um and i was gonna interview him and i'm like I, you know i'm not gonna have time so <laughs> yeah there you go <laughs> we could fill the segments with other cool stuff there you go but this week we're talking about, we got a little comment that someone had told us here. Dragon Punch Dave said, what are your top picks for the scariest and spookiest games you've ever played? So this won't be all retro stuff, although I think when I asked the um, community, I think I specified retro. But some of these games will be on newer systems, not all, you know, Nintendo and Sega Genesis systems. That's right. We got We got a little over. A dozen, I'd say, that we can go in and talk to, give her thoughts on, and uh, maybe some suggestions you guys haven't played. Or maybe you're like, hey, yeah, I never finished that game. I could go back to it. Who knows? That's right. <laughs> and also, I'm sure the community has some games to tell us about at some point. Yeah, we, we could check out uh, Instagram and our community tab on YouTube here. No phone calls this week for people to chime in unfortunately give us a buzz though we got a phone number it's 949-682-9277 that's 949-682-WARP leave us a voicemail this could be a spooky message who knows that's right make it scary <laughs> leave it in a haunted voice <laughs> we could get the uh the scream voice changer oh that'd be cool <laughs> all right um no particular order I just kind of shoot some out here that's right i think one of the obvious ones we'll throw in there for the nes would be friday the 13th right absolutely it's on an 8-bit nes system but they can still do horror and scary i will say the uh they do a good job with the the atmosphere i mean you get a couple different uh scenes where you're walking on the outside of the cabins the trail if you where it's kind of like side scrolling and then you can venture into the woods which you know if you're in the woods it's always scary that's right or 
the caves. You could go into the caves as well, exploring in there, and then into the cabins. Yeah. Where it kind of gets tense because you don't know where Jason's going to be. Is he going to pop out around the corner? And you also have uh, rowing the boat on the lake. So quite a few different places you can explore in uh, Camp Crystal Lake there. Exactly. And if you do happen to beat Jason on the first night, there's two more nights you have to fight him. So then it kind of amps up the difficulty and and the stress because he's a lot faster and stronger on the second day and third day. Yeah. He just keeps coming back. (laughs) For sure. Um, I've, I've done a live stream of this on Friday the 13th where I dressed up in my NES Jason cosplay and I actually just let the camp counselors get killed by Jason. <laughs> it's Jason. So I'm like, all right, yeah, they died. Woo, I'm winning. <laughs> it's the easy way to win. Just dress yeah. as Jason. But I have beaten the game in, and my friend Steve had put out a, a cool book called uh, How to How to Be Friday the 13th, The Easy Way. He's got a few different series on that. And um, yeah, I think it explains to you, you know, it says when you open the game to light all the fireplaces, which isn't really necessary to do. So playing the game back in the day, maybe you're like, OK, I got to go light all these fireplaces and you end up losing a few camp counselors and you're like, did I light them all? And all you get after that is. It's one of the weapons. It might be a torch, but there's a way easier way to get a torch or a pitchfork. Hmm. Sure. The most powerful weapons in the game to defeat Jason. And most people don't know. You really don't want to fight Jason in the cabin, especially on day two or three, because he's so fast with that. Mike Tyson's punch out like <laughs> style style play style of fighting. You, you have to catch him on the trail in order to um, really have a chance of beating the game. Tell Jason, meet me outside. Yeah, yeah. Catch me outside. Catch me outside. Yeah, that's what it was. Catch me outside. Oh, man. I had something I was going to say. I was thinking about it as you were speaking. Mm. As soon as it came, it left my mind. I don't know what it was. I will say, if you guys are into Friday the 13th, I was watching last night, which I haven't seen in a while. There are these awesome fan films called uh, Never Hike Alone. Hmm. And I think like hiking in the snow or something like I'm going to bring it up on YouTube. If you guys are watching, um, I'll just get the the name on there. They they ended up doing three of them. And I think you can watch one that just has all the movies together, but they're really well done. And I was like, wow, this is awesome. OK, let's see. Uh, this one here. Share. Never Hike in the Snow is the first first one. And then they have, um, let's see, Never Hike Alone and then Never Hike Alone 2 is the um, the sequel by Womp Stomp Films. So oh, if I you guess. guys like Friday the 13th, definitely check it out. Yeah, there was one that was... Uh, oh, those are like long. Yeah, well, the first one's 31 minutes, but... The other two are a little bit longer. Yeah, the second one's an hour and 12 Still minutes. Still pretty so. awesome. So if you watch, here's here's the, okay, Legendary Cup. Maybe this is all of it. But definitely check it out. Very well done. Good stuff if you like Friday the 13th. That's cool. All right, moving on to other spooky games or scare, games that scared us. Scared um, the heck out of us. <laughs> I'll, go, I'll go with one of the more obvious one silent hill the silent hill series i don't know if you ever played that one jay i never played that but i feel like i've heard you bring this game up several times this is the one where there's like uh like some fog setting right remembering this correctly yeah similar there you're you're in the town with silent hill and everything's quite foggy so it gives you that eerie atmosphere and especially in the first game they have once once you're exploring the town and you get a little bit further into it, you hear, I don't know if it's an air raid siren or like a tornado siren. Oh, it's terrifying. And then that signals to you, the town's going to change into like the more tormented, demented looking state of it. Oh, and it switches over. So then the enemies are more 
I don't know, gross looking and is hard it, to take down. Is it almost like the day night mechanic in kinda. Simon's Quest? It could be kind of considered that. I mean, it's always dark, but like, yeah, you're going. What from... a terrible night to have a curse. <laughs> 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 and then, of course, uh, Pyramid Head guy with the big metal what? pyramid thing. Pyramid you, ever see that? you ever see Pyramid Head? No, that sounds creepy. That's that's the main. Um... I've heard of Siren Head. No, I don't know who that is. I think that's just some some lore on the internet. I heard a uh, Buckethead that's a guitar player. Heard of him. <laughs> but yeah, Pyramid Head is, uh, you know, this guy that has a big giant pyramid shaped no. head. I don't know. He's creepy. He's got a big giant sword. It's like bigger than the uh, the Buster sword from uh, Final Fantasy. But... What does this guy do? Just go around and slay so... people? So he like drags that big sword around and you kind of hear it Ugh. in the distance. And then when he, you know, he'll spot you, he'll come after you. And so you get that tension of like, oh, I see around the corner and everything's, you know, again, badly lit. So you're like creeping around all the towns and stuff like that. That, it's, it's that actually one. does sound pretty terrifying. Now, I haven't played it in quite some time. The first one I had a good time with it. And then I had never played the sequel. That came out on PS2, but recently now they just remade Silent Hill 2. So I picked it up on PS5. I did live stream it uh, last week or so. I'm about halfway through the game, and man, it's definitely scary. I mean, I'm playing with headphones on in the dark room. I mean, I'll even play, you know, in the afternoon, two in the afternoon, still get some jump scares. Yeah, just because they do such a great job with the atmosphere of that series, for sure. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, maybe I'll play it someday. I don't know. Is is it a PlayStation only game? Yeah, I believe. No, you know what? No. So uh, some of them came out because this series kind of stretches for qu- quite some time. You know, it was originated on PS1, but there's one on Xbox 360. Oh, there's one on the Wii. Hmm. A few on I want to say on PS3 and in the new gen systems. I don't think there was any handheld ones. Does the game just kind of evolve or is it like all the same premise? Like the creeping around the towns trying to stay away from Pyramid Head. Right. They all take place in Silent Hill. As for the story goes, it kind of switches it up and I'm sure they have different places where you're going. It's not always like, oh, I'm going into the hospital. I'm going into the Gotcha. I don't know this place here. I mean, I haven't played. I only played one and two. Um, I heard the one on Wii was kind of neat. Silent Hill Shattered Memories, it's called. Uh, So maybe I'll end up picking that one up here. But trying to finish this one up first. So, Gotcha. What do you got? You got some. Can I I throw you a curveball? I I literally was I literally was just thinking of this. Russ and I were brainstorming earlier and I was like, what games like give me anxiety to play or like make me nervous or scared? And I just thought of this as Russ was talking. Metroid Dread. Yeah, whole, I mean, it's in the name, right? The whole game isn't scary, but those sections where you have to evade the Emmys, mm-hmm. I I literally tense up when I see those things because they move so fast and you hear that little, little bleeping sound. That, that sounds nothing like the noise I just made, but yeah, kind of like little bleeps and and, you know, you can do different things to evade them. But man, Whenever it catches you, you Mm -hmm. you have like one chance, and I don't even know exactly how to time it to like strike them and like get away, which I can do like one out of like 50 times. But other than that, that thing just comes, gets on you and like sticks a needle in your brain or something crazy. Yeah, it's trying to extract your uh, your DNA. Yeah. And but every time I see that thing, I'm like, ah, hey me. Like it freaks me out. Yeah, yeah, definitely I could say so that that game had some stress (laughs) playing it for sure. Where you're like, oh, I don't want them to see me at a creep up. And then once they do, you're like, it's go time. I got to run to the next room or try to plan my escape because you definitely can't take them on. Well, I try to use that um, cloak sometimes and like, oh, hide on, like a ceiling or something. Yeah. No, that's but then when they too. find you, it's like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> I was going to also put on this since you said Metroid Dread. I was going to mention. um metroid fusion on the game boy advance yeah can also give you anxiety because in that game you have the 
um, X Parasite, which takes over Samus's old suit. Okay. So, so it's like evil Samus, and she's kind of stalking you around, and oh. you're you're not as powerful enough to take her on. So you got to like keep running and hiding from her and stuff. So it could get stressful in that. So aspect. it's kind of, it's almost like Amy, but it's just evil Samus. Right, right. And, you know, you see certain see her like you'll be like below in ball form and she'll like come blowing through the wall and like walking oh, gosh. very slow. And you're like, oh, my God. And there's a scene, too, like where they do like these little cut scenes where it zooms into the helmet and then her eyes are just like, you know, hollow. soulless, like, yeah. like hollow, like yellow or like a solid color. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, my God. Yeah. Evil Samus. <laughs> Has no soul, so she, she cares for nothing. Right, right. Could either play either of those games, yeah, in October and be good. I agree. All right, what else we got on the list here? How about? Well, you had mentioned it before. Castlevania Two: Simon's Quest. Here he is, right here. Can you see him with his flame whip? Oh, nice! Yeah, you got a little perler bead. Yep, thanks to Dan. Yeah, yeah, Simon's Quest, awesome game. Uh, gets a lot of hate. That's mm-hmm. und- undeserved, oh, yeah. I think. Um, definitely gives a spooky atmosphere. Uh, some of the best music in the Castlevania series. Both the songs are bangers. Um, definitely gives you that spooky eight bit vibe. You know, as much as an eight bit video game can provide, you're out there in the woods and. There's like blue werewolves and skeletons and bloody eyeballs that drop blood on you. And <laughs> what else is out there? Yeah, I will oh, say they do a great job with the atmosphere in that. Yeah. Where you're not just stuck in the castle where like the first game, it's just all castle bound. You like you start outside of it, you go in, it's just all in the castle. And this one, you're exploring, like you said, all the woods, you're going to different towns, you're yeah. going to the, the manors. Which are like the castles. Yeah. Um, there's like a graveyard you could go through. You yep. meet death on a boat that like takes you across the lake. The ferryman. Right. Yeah. Yep. I'll, and, don't worry. I'll take you somewhere good. <laughs> <laughs> and like you said, it has the day night cycle where you're like, okay, I'm safe. I'm in a town. Yep. It's daytime. What a horrible yeah. night to have a curse. And then all the zombies come <clears throat> out. Yep. Love always, it. Always happens at the wrong time. You're like, oh, I almost got enough to buy a crystal. It, that's exactly when it happens. It's like you. It's like you need 150 coins to buy the next whip, and you have like 148, and it's like, no, no, have to fight for two minutes just to go buy a whip. Right, right. Um, I am excited to play. They're kind of remaking, kind of not. It's not official. But RetroWare is putting out a game called the the Quest of the Adventure. Ah, what the heck is it? It's like the longest name ever. Simon's Adventure Quest. Let me see. RetroWare is it Simon's like an unofficial Quest. translated what? version? No. So like, I mean, it's a new game. All right, it's called the Transylvania Adventure of Simon Quest. Weird. That's the long name. But and basically, is it on Switch? Is it updated graphics? Yeah, so it it looks like a um let me let me pull up a let me trailer see here for let you. Let me lay my eyes upon this game. It's basically, you know, how they did the Bloodstained Curse of the Moon ish. Yep. They kind of did that with, with this game here. Why does he look like such a goober? Goober. Why did I say that so weird? So it, it looks eight bit, but you know, you're playing it on a switch or like a newer gen console where it's wide Oh, Yeah, this looks exactly like, but they added you know a, a bunch of stuff Brand to it mansion. to make it a little bit better. New new enemies, new bosses, and oh, that's I guess cool. That's that's moves. this is you get a map, yeah. So this is like gonna be really fun. So I'm looking oh, forward that's to cool. this. So I don't know when it fully comes out. They've been teasing it and had it at a few conventions where you can uh, play it. And I did talk to Justin Silverman. And he he sent me like a demo to try it out. Yeah. But I think it's only on PC to to like play the demo. It wasn't working mm. on my Mac because I'm like, how do I do this? And he's like, oh, you just extract the files. And I'm like, 
uh, it's not working on my Mac, so I have to <laughs> I have to mm-hmm. go use my PC and see if the, I could get it working because that'd be cool to like stream or showcase. Yeah, that'd be sick. What if it comes out Halloween night? Ooh, maybe that would be spooky. <laughs> um, you mentioned one to me before that was kind of creepy. That was good. That was a newer. Is newer it game? Is it the? Uh, would you kindly? Yeah. Would you kindly <laughs> tell me about Bioshock Rust? <laughs> Classic game for sure. This one yeah. definitely scared the heck out of me dude bioshock was super creepy um i just bought it but back in the early 2000s i would buy games based off the cover i didn't really do a lot of research and i was like this cover looks so cool and like just the way the game starts out you're in the plane you crash you're in the water you swim to you just happen to be right next to this door that leads to an underground city what are the what what luck and um you get down there and you hear all this creepy music and there's this all these tape recordings like that you're learning about like this city and how it became what it is and all these mutated people and um the whole game that whole game is just a roller coaster um there's a lot of twists and turns and and there's alternate endings based on your decisions you make kind of like chrono trigger um and it's just so good and so creepy also the big daddies are terrifying Right, right. You're like, can I go up against one? Should I? Like, I need to get the little sister, but she's being guarded by the big daddy. Yep. Now, I did play on an easier difficulty because I'm like, why not? Right. Yeah. Why not? Why torture myself? I don't know. <laughs> they, and, masochist. And they do make it pretty. I forget if it's because of the setting I'm on, but like those, uh, I forgot how you save. It's in like a tube, right? Or whatever. So yeah. Like if you're fighting, Vita save. If you're fighting someone, you die. You just go right back to that tube, and then you can just run right back into battle and be just like, "Yeah, beep, 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 beep. okay, now I won." Because I, I think I, I think I could do this. I think my whatever setting I played on, you could do that. Okay, but yeah, definitely cool atmosphere. And again, even going into the second one, you're still in Rapture, playing as as a big daddy. There's a couple parts in that game too that are just so crazy like i just didn't expect it uh okay i don't I almost don't want to tell anybody because if you've never played it you're you're doing yourself a disservice not to play bioshock it's the story is so good and um there's just one scene that i really want to tell you guys about but i'm not going to if you know you know i'll just say uh it, it, it involves a golf club and it's pretty <laughs> awesome teeing off yeah yeah now i didn't experience this when it came out back in the day i had bought it they had the collection on ps4 so i only maybe the past six years or so i forgot when that collection came out that's when i ended up playing i just went in order played that played the second one played the third one and it was good because it did have like the dlc in the collection yeah um so I, i may have played it a little later i probably played it like 2010 2011 mm-hmm. right, okay. right around the time i met my wife because she would be like please do not play that in the same room with me i don't like the music and i'm like all right so i have to go play it in the other room the music the music's all like isn't it like 50s like yeah well it creeped her out so <laughs> <All right. laughs> it doesn't take much to creep Haley out fair enough bioshock and they're coming with a uh i think a netflix movie Sweet or something. Soon Let me know too. when. I can't wait so, to watch that. Yeah, should be good. Also, I want to. I just want to mention real quick too. Um, now's a good time to watch the Castlevania series on Netflix as well. Oh, I actually. Um, side note: I watched two episodes last night because nice. I had um, finished some stuff up early, and the wife was already passed out in bed, and it was like ten o'clock, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go put on the Netflix and watch the Castlevania series. I don't know how many episodes it is, but I'm. I'm two in. You might need to let me borrow your password, Russ, because I never got to see the third series with uh with Richter. Director. Yeah. I think it's gonna be a good one. I was yeah. like, okay. So we'll see if I finish this up for October. There you go. All right. Moving along. Um, let's see. Let's talk about I mean Resident Evil series. I did put Resident 
Evil 3 on okay. the list because that's the one that has um, Nemesis. Wait, is it? Ne- yeah, Nemesis is in that one. Nemesis oh, Enforcer? Just kidding, that's, that's a G.I. <laughs> so you're being stalked freaking by this big gorilla looking guy. Oh, gorilla looking zombie guy. Big gorilla zombie. Hmm, don't know. <laughs> Never played any of them, really. Um, let's see. I'm trying to bring up. I played one where like this dog's chewing on something, and then I don't know something like that. I can't remember exactly. So here's the cover. There, there's there's the nemesis. Oh yeah, that thing's terrifying. You can see all his teeth and stuff, and he walks around going stars, <laughs> stars. Yeah, it stands for. Geez, I would, uh, something tactical. Uh, I don't know. It's an acronym. That's stupid. I'm sorry, Resident Evil fans. But that's dumb. Resident Evil stars, stars. stand for stars. Special Tactics and Rescue Service should stand for stupid. <laughs> it's, it's Raccoon's Police Department's version of SWAT, and um. at least a few members had military backgrounds. So, so he's creeping around the corner, essentially. Trying to come after you. Stars. Stars. <laughs> stars. He's so, got no lips. Definitely freaks you out. And if you <laughs> go back, like playing it now, it's even more anxiety because of the tank <laughs> controls on PS1. You're like, how do I move this guy? Ah. Oh, is it like just crappy? You're like, God darn it. <laughs> God darn it. I like that. <laughs> but um, trying to robot your they, way They the have game. remade all the resident evils to, for modern systems. And I'd say it's just as scary. What's great though, with the PC versions of the game, they had like hacks. So they changed out the nemesis and there's one where they changed it out. And for whatever reason, it's Thomas, the train. That's terrifying. <laughs> He's just creeping around his little train <laughs> trying to find you. That's amazing. So if you haven't played Resident Evil 3, give it a shot. (laughs) Yeah, that's weird. Tom's the train. Who would have thought? Let's see. Sit that one. One, two, three, four. I got five left. I got one I randomly thought of. Okay. It's it's scary in a weird kind of way. Yeah. Um, Humble on 2 for the Super Nintendo. Because what's scarier than being chased by a couple of people trying to rob your house? Um, the, the game is not very much anxiety filled, but there's one part where you're in, in the uncle's house. Okay. And if they catch you, they literally strangle you. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to commit murder. And as a kid, one of my fears was, um, my dad was a pastor. Okay. And I would go to yeah, church yeah. on Wednesday night and I would usually come home first cause I wanted to watch TV. And I used to have nightmares about coming home first as my house was being robbed and like the robbers catching me. And I don't know if that was pre home alone or post home alone, but Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That could be scary. Like you go into the home and you're like, who are these people in my house already? Yeah. And they're like, get out of here, kid. Or, you know, or or, or worse yet, come here, (laughs) kid. (laughs) Where do you hide the jewels? Yeah. Where's the jewels, kid? Where's the super Nintendo kid? (laughs) Anyway, sorry. That was a random one off. Uh, Let's see. Let's talk about, the reason why I bought a PS4. Hmm. What was that I, reason? I played this game at my friend's house and I was like, this game's freaking cool. I was like, I got to pick it up. That game's called Until Dawn. Until Dawn. I don't know if you ever heard of this one here. I've Which heard appa- of it, but I know nothing of it. Apparently, too, they're making a movie out of it. Which I'm like, I'm not sure how that's going to work. But it doesn't usually turn out well, Russ. I'll say that from experience. Right, right. So here's the cover of the game. Ooh, It's got this uh, hourglass that looks like a skull on the top. And then there's like a house and you see a bunch of characters below. What was pretty unique, I thought about the game, a couple things, is the voice actors for the game. They actually modeled them exactly how they look in real life. Oh, wow. Interesting to be in the game so all the voice actors look that's kind of nice look the same 
Um, so you'll recognize if you were like, oh, that's because at the time I was I was watching. Um, what was it like, like shield or something like that? OK. And one of the guys that plays in that was on there. But the main thing with this game is you go through the game and it gives you decisions to make. And depending on what decision you make changes the ending. The whole main goal is to have everyone in your group survive the okay. night. But you could still get a decent ending if a few people are killed off. <laughs> gotcha. But this way it gives you plenty of like chances to play through um, multiple endings. And some of them you where it gives you choices, you can even not make a choice and then see what happens. Huh. But I thought that was so cool. Um, they, I think they did some type of follow up game, which was kind of similar, but not. But I don't know. Just playing that was a fun experience overall. And it was like a creepy story where you're in this uh, big cabin in the woods where you meet a bunch of your friends and these creatures called Wendigos are, oh, yeah. are creeping around outside. And Wendigos. yeah, good story for sure. And after I beat it, I was watching all these like theory videos on it and getting backstory on it there was a really good supernatural episode about the wind to go oh okay just saying in case you want to watch it it's pretty good. <laughs> so until dawn maybe maybe the movie would be good i don't know because that's what people are saying like the whole thing of the game was like you got to make the choices and all this so now we're just gonna watch the person make the choice for us i guess i don't yeah. know maybe it's interactive movie russ Hey, maybe <laughs> the audience votes in whichever way they vote it. There's more. Uh, yeah, I get it. Could be. There That'd was be cool. There was cool back in the day, early days of YouTube. They had a few videos where, I mean, I guess you could still do this now, where you make um, a part of a video, and then at the end of it, you can have like the suggested videos come up. And kind of like choose your path, like click this video to go down the alley or click down this video. Oh. And, and you could set that up. I Maybe for next year, it'd be awesome to do for a Halloween. Halloween special. Yeah. But basically, you the videos that you put up at the end, you put them as unlisted. So no one's just going to stumble upon this video. Mm. Like searching. That, that way they have to go in order. Right. So you have to watch video A, which is the introduction. And then all of them from that there on plays plays out. That's pretty cool. Never so basically, was... choose your own adventure, but live, I guess, or whatever yeah. video version. Pretty cool. Cool. Let's see. What about Night Trap? You Night ever play Trap. this one? Never played Night <laughs> Trap. I've seen videos on it. Uh, okay. I think Tyler from My Retro Life did a video on Night Trap, maybe. Yeah. Um, but it's a Sega CD game. Uh, I, I I just feel like it's about people breaking in your home, and I don't know what they're trying to do to you. Probably not good things. They're like I'm trying to remember this. I think they're vampires Ooh. because they have these like collars that like go over their neck, and I think gets gets the blood from you. Oh, let's see. We'll we'll get the Wikipedia. Inter- wiki it's wiki. A- Night Trap is a 1992 interactive movie developed by Digital Pictures, published by Sega for the Sega CD. Um, what is here? Gameplay. The player is instructed by an in-game police squad to watch live surveillance footage of the Martin household and trigger traps to capture anyone that is seen endangering the house guest. Um, I'm trying to see if it says that what they are. If, I'm pretty sure they were some type of vampires. Hmm. Um, it originated in 1986 as a prototype game. The system used VHS tape technology to present film-like gaming experiences. That's pretty neat. But it did come out. They did do a re-release of this game, and I have it on Switch. Oh, that's well. cool. But it it does get very anxiety ridden because 
you have all the different cameras. It's almost like a Five Nights at Freddy's, right? You're trying to manage everything. You're looking at each room. Gotcha. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you have to go to each room and kind of hear people's conversation. And in order to trigger the traps in the house, there's a certain code. So it has to be like, oh, it's blue six or something like that. So you need to be in the certain room to hear what the code is and then switch to another room. If you see like one of these people breaking in to then use the trap. So I've seen a like a uh, speed run of it, so to say. And there's no way you can get any of the story. Like through one playthrough, because you're switching the cameras so much, you don't get to see what everyone's saying, kind of. But it's a good one for sure. I would say to to try out at least once, or heck, even just watch a you know a gameplay of it on on YouTube. It's got that like B movie aspect of it. I would say, yeah, it definitely looks B movie for sure. And it did say what did it say about recording? Um, uh, and this one also too. The game was one of the principal subjects of the 1993. United States Senate committee hearing on violent video games, along with Mortal Kombat. It's true. Uh, Night Trap was cited during the hearing as promoting gratuitous violence and sexual aggression against women, prompting toy retailers, Toys R Us and KB to pull the game from the shelves that December. And so on Sega CD, it came as um, two, two discs, I believe. Okay. So, so rumor at the schoolyard. Was if you get to disc two, you might be seeing some of the boobs. Whoa, no way. <laughs> false, though. But oh, false. Dress the ladies proof. are in like nightgowns, though, like through through some of the, the scenes. So I'm like, OK, I mean, I could see why. Yeah. Some parents were upset. It's a little risque. Uh, let's see. We got three left. I well, We could go to the comments before we say what our last three on the list are and see what people are saying in um, Instagram and YouTube. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. What did you say? What did you say? Springfield, let's hear from you. All right. Over on our Instagram page at the weekly warp pipe. We got Ty gaming says, I believe there is one game that really set the bar for horror games of today and that is silent hill for the ps1 yes yes mentioned that one for sure i'd love to go back to also i don't know why they chose to remake two before one yeah like why i I guess maybe more people love two so if two does good they'll do one unsure we'll see it's like luigi's mansion too who knows why so retroholic 16 says what's up guys couple of games i think that are super creepy are silent hill 2 we got eternal darkness on the gamecube i played a little bit of that it's definitely got a creepy vibe i'd love to go back to it um resident evil 4 on the gamecube also i can't be the only one that thought the big eel in the pirate ship in mario 64 was super creepy i'm looking it up now (laughs) <laughs> like a picture of it the big yeah. the big eel super mario this, is what, this is what i'm seeing oh you're just gonna do the phone here we go if jay's camera can focus it's got like soulless eyes it does that's what i'm seeing <laughs> looks pretty creepy you can't, you, you can't see it in the picture but it has a green pupil oh okay i was gonna say the eyes look soulless yeah, it looks scary. I don't lie. We got Dragon Punch, Dave. So I've got these three retro games that are super scary. And I'm going to tell you all about them. <laughs> Number one is Silent Hill on the PS1. Man, that game was intense. <laughs> Playing it in the dark at night was a whole other level of scary. My second pick is Splatterhouse on the Sega Genesis. Oh yeah, That game was gory as heck, especially for its time. And last but not least, I got to mention Maniac Mansion. Oh, good call. On the NES. Don't let the bright colors fool you. That game was dark and super creepy. And full of microwave hamsters. (laughs) I was going to say, and you can microwave a hamster. On some 
of their visions. Right. And then let's see what YouTube had to say. We got my buddy Tony says, I'll never forget how scary the original (sighs) Resident Evil was. It was 1996 Christmas break and myself and four friends were playing the game, taking turns and all the jump scares continue to have us on the edge of our seats constantly. Nice. Pure Prophet says, for me, it would have to be Friday the 13th and Jaws on the That's NES. funny that you mentioned that. Jay had brought that up <laughs> when we were brainstorming. The way Jason and Jaws would just pop out of nowhere had me on edge as a kid. Weirdly, Roger Rabbit gave me the same feeling as well with the Weasleys constantly trying to chase you down. The Weasels. Um, did I say Weasleys? <laughs> you said Weasleys. <laughs> Maybe that's that's their group name. The Weasleys. We got River City Ransom. I didn't play many scary games growing up. Wuss. Just kidding. <laughs> this will sound strange, and I don't know if I had a childhood trauma episode with it, but the menu screen and TNC surf design has no music. It was just 8-bit wave crashing sounds. It creeps me out to no end to this day. I honestly hate it. That is so interesting. We got to hear it. Can I get on there? I'm just going to call and just let that music play. What is it? Menu screen, he said? It's just like the title screen. Oh, title screen. Can you hear it? (laughs) Nope. I can't hear or see it. Oh, because I'm sharing the wrong thing. Hang on, hang on. I'm still showing the comments. (laughs) Yeah, I guess it could be creepy. It's almost like a like just like a wave crashing over. I know exactly what he's talking about. I wonder if he like fell asleep with it on one night. Because I could almost have a correlation of that in like a. Like, like a, a static TV screen. And, and that is, you know, very relevant in like uh, horror movies, poltergeist and, and stuff like that. A lot of 80s horror movies with that TV just on like something's going to come. Do you out. guys remember back in the day when you were watching TV? And the network was like, we're all done for the night. <laughs> right, 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 right. And, and then it would cut to like. Either that like rainbow screen or like right, just, I'd be like, Ooh. <laughs> yeah, isn't that weird? Like, and that, then sometimes it would even then after that it would play the like the pleasure allegiance, right? And yeah, then just bum, end. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah, just yeah, that's so weird. I I forgot that the TV didn't actually play twenty four hours a day. Yeah, there was that's a time weird. <laughs> All right, well, I'm calling Jordan tomorrow and I'm just going to like let that music play. I mean, he's going to shut the podcast off when he hears this. We traumatized him now. <laughs> All right, we got a few more on the list here. I wanted to mention Doom 2016. Ooh. I don't know if anyone of you guys played that. That came out on uh, PS4, uh, Xbox One. It's a newer Doom. Definitely got some great music. It's like metal heavy. Um, run and gun, fast paced first person shooter. A lot of gore in it. But you're you're going to, to hell and Mars and attacking all these demons and stuff. So certainly it could be spooky and scary. There scary. are there are some scenes, you know, where you're kind of creeping around and you're like, what's what's coming up next? When you're in like a big battle, it's not quite as scary because right. the, the metal music going and you got your big guns. You're like, yeah, but definitely a good one to play for Halloween time. Cool. And they're working on a new one. I don't know when the new one's coming out. It's. Uh, is it medieval themed or something like that? I believe I think you get like a. Like an axe or something that's like medieval ish. I don't that's know. That's cool. 
kind of then reminds me of like Evil Dead when it was medieval, right? In uh, Evil Dead, what was it? Army, Army of Darkness. Can't say that enough, buddy. And My knowledge then... of horror games is so minimal. <laughs> Sorry, I don't have much to contribute. Castlevania. Castle. I love Castlevania. Love Castlevania. Home Alone too scary. Someone did bring up Splatterhouse on Sega Genesis. We we're going to mention Splatterhouse on Turbo Graphics 16. That's right. The first one uh, plays very similar. So the Turbo Gra- Turbo Gra- uh, Genesis had two and three. Turbo Graphics yep. had the first one, and it's like a slow paced beat 'em up, I would say. But yeah. again, yeah, very gross. You're you play as Rick. And very similar to Jason, he has this mask, almost looks like a hockey mask. Or it's whatever. like Jason and Michael Myers had a child, right? And Rick, and that like possesses the guy, so he gets these like powers, so all jacked up and stuff. So you're you're punching demons in the face. You get a two by four, and you whack them, and they splatter against the back wall. It's pretty gross. And the music is like yeah. super creepy. <clears throat> There's like grotesque things too, like yes, for sure. Guts, like, guts falling out. You see people yeah. hanging by their neck, and then like their torsos cut. Very for, graphic for sure. Yeah, yeah. Now I did stream yesterday. It's called. It came out on the Famicom. It's called Splatterhouse when Paku Graffiti. Okay. I don't know if you if you heard of this or not, but. It's basically a cutum up. Oh, I've seen this. Instead of now a beat, you em, say beat that. Up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're cute chibi. Up. They're like super cute. Um, and it's the same concept, but it's it's, it's like, like Mighty Funnel Fight meets uh, meets uh, Splatterhouse. Right, right. Let's see. I'll, sh- I'll show you guys a little bit of the uh, the gameplay there. Of me playing, but yeah, he plays this little cute guy and. Psh- so if you if you're not into scary scary stuff, you can play this version. <laughs> yeah, like with Paku Graffiti. But regular Splatterhouse, you can play it in the arcade or Turbo Graphics 16. One of my buddies has this nice candy cab with it, so when I go to the arcade, I usually play that one for a little bit. It's on my Turbo Graphics Mini, and so I've oh, played nice. it on there a few times. Yeah. And then the last one I had on my list, I forget if I ever mentioned this. I'm sure I did, maybe in past episodes. I don't know if Jay's ever heard of this game. It did come out in PS3 and Xbox 360. This game called Deadly Premonition. No, nothing about it, buddy. It's got a similar vibe to uh, Silent Hill, but also... Uh, maybe maybe a little bit of detectiveness in it, I guess you would say. I guess last minute, the guy that was uh, creating it, they they wanted to put some type of combat in it. He wasn't going to have any combat. It was just going to be you exploring hmm. and trying to figure out this this uh, mystery here or whatever. But they added some combat kind of last minute. So it kind of got thrown in there, but you, you play as this detective that goes to this small town trying to figure out uh, the, like a, a body shows up and it's a young girl. And you're like, what happened to her, basically? And he based a lot of this off of the TV series uh, Twin Peaks. OK, if you ever saw that and when I'd never seen Twin Peaks before and I played this game. And then when I had seen an episode, I'm like, wow, like, OK, he like heavily leaned into right. how Twin Peaks goes. I think but, I have seen it. But um, let's see if I could just bring up some gameplay here of it. Just so you oh, can kind of see. And Dracula's <laughs> curse. Shout out to Phil. Here we go. Just kind of jump ahead. You know, he plays this like third person perspective. But again, it's kind of like some parts of the town are all like creepy and stuff, and you're doing like puzzles and detective Why is he work. A suit, because he's like an agent. He's like a, mm. a, a you know hotshot guy coming to this town. 
And like this, the story just evolves over time. So here's like the bad guy coming to get you. So you can go inside this locker and hide in the locker and try not to move. And then he won't, you know, find you. Oh, he's creepy looking. I don't like him. Yeah, I forget if it. Oh, so you have to hold L to hold your player's breath. And you're like, don't find me. Because you have like, breathing. if you run out of air, will you like pass out? I think you just go like, <gasps> you know, and then he'll hear you and come over. So it's a really cool game. Like I played it and like fell in love with it. And I was like, this is great. I had a good time with it. Cool story. They did come out with like a sequel that I got on the switch. And I wasn't into that one nearly as much. And I never finished playing it. Maybe I'll go back to it. I'm not sure. But I thought it was pretty neat. Deadly premonition. Kind of cool. like that survival horror stuff. It kind of has that. There's a lot of detective works in it. The combat's fairly easy. So, you know, you could go into it leisurely. Never heard of it. So pretty cool. Yeah. So I think that's a pretty... Pretty good list. It certainly differs from if you listen to our episode last year, we kind of did some similar topics for Halloween. Um, So we added some new games on there. So maybe jot it down, maybe comment on this video and let us know which ones we forgot. You know, that should have made the list that you played that maybe scared you. I know there's quite a few get like we didn't mention Dead Space. I never played any of those. I know that's scary. Um, What else is there? Uh, I know there's a bunch on Xbox 360, and I never had a 360. See, I had a 360, but I was so far up Halo's bottom that I didn't play anything else. <laughs> I could see certain covers like that stand out when I was working at the game store. You know, I'd be stocking the shelves, and I was like, "Oh, this game looks creepy." And I'm like, "Okay," but never played it. Yeah. So, who knows? What do we got? We got. A phone number if you guys do want to call us. Mention again, 949-682-9277. Leave us a voicemail. Let us know some topics you want us to cover or chime in on this week's topic. You can check out the theweeklywarppipe.com. That always has all our episodes and everything on there. And a quick shout out to our Patreons. We got Dan and Nicole's Treasures Untold, Joe Sheevy, Trace Living Good, Samantha Chang, Rodney Torres, Retroholic 16, and Austin Mills. And of course, our spots are Bull Airs. Check out their awesome stock of custom shoes and clothes. You can save 10% with the code WARP10. He just did a horror um, drop of shoes and clothing. There you go. That looks freaking awesome. I think they are still in maybe pre-order phase. You might be able to go over there. And he did just drop Puppet Master. Huh. <laughs> Jackets, shoes, t-shirts that look freaking awesome. So the pre the pre-order for that is coming to well, 1025. So you'll be you go. you'll still be good on that. I don't know if the other ones are are still up here, but he did do uh Freddy stuff it uh Friday the thirteenth and Terrifier. Yeah, like a cool black and white shirt for that with some blood splatter. So check it out. And yeah, appreciate you guys hanging out with us. And hopefully everything will be fixed up next week, audio version wise. And you'll be caught up on Spotify, iTunes and all that good stuff. If not, I'll, I'll make another post and keep you guys posted. Russ is good <laughs> at that. Sweet. Well, appreciate you guys hanging out with us. As always, thanks for jumping in the warp pipe with us. And we'll see you on the next level.